Hi everyone. I'm in an airport very super early start to go back after two days at World Football Summit in Sevilla. Um, it's a huge uh, venue with two big stages, a lot of things happening, um, an exhibition part with some startups and some companies, um, a lot of networking. I would say everything is focused on football. Uh, some good session and I was also on stage uh, on day two. Uh, to talk about uh, football in 2030, which I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> I know what that will be. Um, let's see the session that caught my attention. The first one is football um, and fan engagement with two clubs, Arsenal and uh, Antwerp Frankfurt, with very different approaches. Tim Jäger of and Frankfurt has a very strong DIY approach, while Arsenal, I think, it's more of an integrator. And our starting point was, and our philosophy is that we as Eintracht Frankfurt want to own every club-owned digital touchpoint of a fan with Eintracht Frankfurt. That means, obviously we're not creating like our own social media channels, we don't want to create the next Instagram or Facebook or something like that. But every time when a fan interacts with Eintracht Frankfurt directly, it's running through all systems. Meaning, we as Eintracht Frankfurt and Eintracht Tech, we developed our own fan app by ourselves. So we have own software developers within Eintracht Tech. We developed our own ticketing solution, we developed our own e-commerce marketplace, we developed our own analytical tools. Then the power of football to change the world. We may need to change football before, but that's another story with Fab Masmura and Mohamed Yunus. It is spread throughout the community. I was watching when I was coming here the video that was posted by Sadio Mane, a very proud Senegalese uh, uh, football player. And when people were telling him, how come you are using a broken phone? You are making 600,000 pounds a week as a player. He told them, look, when I was poor, when I was young, I used to play without proper shoes. Quite a deep dive on the Saudi League with Carlo Nora and also Peter Hutton with Vicente and Jordan Garner. So different angles of how the Saudi League is trying to create something that goes beyond buying one or two top players in their 40s. It's a deeper transformation also of the country. Uh, it's something that we need to sort of understand if it, if it will then really improve um, if you, the country as, as a whole. So we changed our broadcast contracts to give more footage availability to the players, to influencers, to get the story out there from a different source of information. This is not just about people watching a 90-minute game. You know, we need to get people interested in the storylines of Saudi Arabia. Some of the age profile of players that have come to Saudi is actually lower than most people realize. It's really been in that band of 28 to 32, not 35 and up, I think. It's unbelievable the transformation. And again, in football, has that power as well. And I think that, you know, Peter just said it, you know, the very young population. It's so important that actually the Saudi League can be a magnet, right, to implement that social change. Then we have Marco Giovina presenting Mercury 13, a new venture, which is a fund, <clears throat> 100 million fund, to invest in women's football club in Europe and Latin America. Quite an interesting uh, challenge and uh, opportunity. We are looking for a controlling stake. That's very important for us. If we're going to bring in a management team that's going to help on the commercial side, that's going to help on the footballing side, we need to make sure that, that we affect the destiny of the clubs that we invest in. Uh, we're doing it in a very specific geo that is Europe and Latin America. Of course, there's going to be opportunity to go outside of it. I've served now on boards for more than 13 years, where unfortunately I've been pretty much the only woman on the boards. And I kind of moved away from the Women's World Cup in 2019 when, yeah, women's football is inevitable. You can see the quality of the product on the field. From then to the Euros in England to now this World Cup, the product just keeps getting better and better. My friend Jenna Travelos um, moderated a panel on uh, women football with also Tammy Parlo. Uh, I will have an interview with both of them, a separate interview with them, uh, to talk about women football, but more about that later. Kansas City um, is the first stadium that's going to be built for women and I think by women, with a yeah. woman's owner and a woman's pre president. <laughs> and what that means as far as, what's the differentiation? Yeah. I don't know, I mean, I think we'll see what does it mean to build a stadium fit for women's football? Yeah. And how is that different than what we've built in the past?
Yeah. Um, I think there's going to be a lot more around kind of safety considerations, but also how do you have access to the players and how do you feel like you're part of the team? Yeah. Because that's, I think, the, one of the, the big differences and um, how fans and not just women engage with women's, with women's football players. Please. Women's Sport Trust is an organization in the UK that is around trying to make uh, women's sport more visible, viable, and ultimately unstoppable. I think we've <laughs> seen um, over the last, gosh, 18 months or so, the visibility of women's sport has risen remarkably. And then a, a long monologue from Martin Sorrell, um, now with the S4 Capital, uh, that has always, I mean, it's amazing, like he can still have a multiple generation in, in what you say are, are represented, so he's really forward-looking and he knows a lot. And uh, he didn't take more, any question because it was so dense what he said, so intense. I think overall a great event, uh, good job for the team at WFS. One last thing to add, we were in Spain and I was a bit surprised that there was no discussion about the guys' disaster, at least for my knowledge. So there may have been, but I haven't heard anything about it, which is a bit weird.